Hello and welcome. It is our Delva 12, um, our bi-weekly Delva 12. Uh, we missed you guys last week. You wouldn't have seen us, but we are back. Here I am. And on the day of love, isn't that incredible? Um, it lands on this day. And as believers, we get to know the greatest love. Um, the I lay myself down for you love. And uh, that is the agape love of Jesus. So just as people are jumping online, I just want to pray for us. So Jesus, we really do want to just thank you and honor you for the love that you have for us. The selfless, uh, laying yourself down, laying your life down for the benefit of others, even when they're not deserving of it, and even when they're being incredibly unlovable. So we just thank you, Jesus, that you press past the pain and pursue us. And you set such a beautiful example of love. Help us to have a selfless love, a selfless love for our family, our friends, the people around us, Lord God, that they would be able to see an exhibit of your pure, beautiful, incredible, holy and wonderful love in Jesus name. So I just thought to share something from yesterday, uh, very relevant for today. Uh, we were had the opportunity to go to a business woman's networking breakfast and it was lovely, uh, Jess and myself. And I just wanted to share today some of the stuff that I spoke about yesterday. Uh, I just thought it was really pertinent and could really be encouraging on this day of love. We know it's a secular thing, it's a worldly thing, but we know that it's a day that we can celebrate the love of the Father over us, which we of course get to celebrate absolutely every day. But I'd uh, just recently upgraded my phone and a whole bunch of my pictures had shuffled around in my gallery and one of them came to the forefront that I didn't even know that I had. And it said this, it was this picture of a silhouette I actually posted on Facebook on my personal page this morning, a silhouette and the girl's holding her hands like this and there's a, a sunrise and it says, don't forget to love yourself. And I just thought how incredible that is because sometimes we obviously want to love others, but we need to love ourselves first. You know, there's that scripture that says um, in, in the Gospels, we see it, uh, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself and Mark and Matthew we can find it the thing is is it's going to be pretty impossible to love our neighbor as ourselves if we don't love ourselves. if we have got a, uh, a low impression of ourself um, perhaps because of the mistakes or regrets or um, just downright not loving ourselves just disappointment and frustration toward ourself it's going to be very hard to love others beyond loving ourselves. Maybe it's rejection. Maybe we feel rejected and by somebody else and that rejection has caused us to dislike or be uh, disappointed with ourselves. And the incredible thing is with God is that we can go to him and then we suddenly when we feast and we acknowledge and we embrace the love that he has for us, it becomes a catalyst for us being able to only but love ourselves when we understand that our creator loves the created so much then we start to love ourselves and in turn then we can love others around us it comes out of a place of overflow so you know and just here's a side note but if someone seems cross it's a key thing for us not to Get offended by them because perhaps they're not actually cross with us maybe they are cross with themselves and the manifestation of that is that they snap and they lash out and they act as if they're cross with us so then what happens is we distance ourselves and we don't want to love because we think that we take it personally but actually they're cross with themselves which is even more reason for us to press in and encourage them because if they realize that they've hurt our feelings or offended us they're going to be even angrier with themselves um, for that that act uh, you know and rejection has a projection if a person's feeling rejected generally they 
want to close themselves away and become uh, isolated and then they can sort of be hard to relate to those are the people that actually need the love the most because the rejection has a projection and then what happens is is you know you end up wondering well they're a little bit quirky you know i just maybe might avoid them no they need our love the most so that they can understand the love of others and the love of the father so uh yesterday uh um all of this is easier when we know how loved we are so one of the items that i used yesterday and i might not go through all of them i'm just going to check on time um it was a puzzle piece and we are going through the purpose series at the moment if you haven't already jumped on board we want to encourage you find a life group get on board get the manual um this coming weekend will be part two of purpose and the key scriptures from ephesians 2 verse 10 that we are God's masterpiece. Other translations actually call it his poem. And you think about a masterpiece. An artist is so impressed and proud of their masterpiece. They don't put it behind, stashed behind a whole bunch of stuff. They put it on display. They put their painting on an easel. They are happy to display that thing. And they want people to see it because it's a masterpiece. A piece of the master. And uh, just a play on words, this is a puzzle piece. And uh, if we could just imagine that there is a, a almost like a puzzle shaped hole in our hearts that can literally only be filled by God. And when we understand that we are a piece of the master and we put his love into our heart and receive it, we understand that we can then start to master peace. P-E-A-C-E, -E. and we're not striving for other things to fill that God-shaped hole that's in our heart, a bit like our South African roads. If you think about, you know, the potholes, the, the roads are tarred, and sometimes they try and fill those holes with concrete, and we all know that that isn't a lasting um, solution, but, and, and we know that when we're trying to fill that God-shaped hole with anything else, it is not a lasting solution. We need to fill that piece with Him understanding that we're a masterpiece, that we are a piece of the master here on earth. He displays us with great joy. Isaiah 61, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And, uh, and then we will truly get to master peace because then we're at peace with ourselves when we know that we're at peace with our master. We're at peace with one who created us. He loves us. His heart is for us. He adores us. He broods over us. He attentively listens to our prayers. He loves the sound of our voice. When we turn our attention towards him, he is there ready and waiting like a, an attentive father. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And uh, it's an incredible thing if you consider the history that we have with him. You know, you might have only got saved at the age of 20. Well, I tell you that there was something happening even when you were in your mother's womb. When we were being, and here it is, a Psalm 139, and in this little jar, uh, the other item was a piece of wool. And uh, so could, for this, this point, um, Psalm 139, verse 13, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And there's such an attitude of confidence there of approving of actually your works are wonderful. I am wonderful. So isn't that an incredible thing for a person uh, who only gets saved later in life? There has been such a journey of history with the Father where he was brooding even in your mother's womb as you were knitting you together in your mother's womb. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful thought? And then it carries on, verse 17, and uh, I didn't use sea sand. Um, the, the picture, the, the item was a shell. I thought to put a little shell in instead of messy sea sand that could just go everywhere. Um, but verse 17 in Psalm 139, carrying on, says, How precious to me, are your thoughts, God, how vast the sum of them, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And if you look in your Bible, down right at the little bottom here, there's a little note about that, that verse. and says, instead of um, how precious to me are your thoughts, God, 
how vast the sum of them. It says, or how amazing are your thoughts concerning me. God has so many beautiful thoughts concerning you. Isn't that a beautiful um, epiphany? Isn't that a, just a wonderful revelation to have that he is thinking beautiful things about you? Nothing negative, nothing shameful, only the, the most excellent and pure and honoring and exhorting thoughts. That's what he has towards us. And if we were to count them, those thoughts, those beautiful, amazing thoughts that he has for us, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never in my life gone and sat down at the beach and picked up, uh, yes, I've gone and picked up shells and I've gone and, you know, picked up glass, which is maybe frosted because it's been in the ocean for a long time. But I have never sat with a handful of sand and gone, right, I'm going to count every single grain. I'd be there for days, just a handful of sand trying to count that. And we see this that his thoughts concerning us, which are so amazing, are so vast that they would outnumber the grains of sand. Let that sink in, friends. Let that just wash over you, that love and that adoration and that approval. You see, these kind of things, when we feast on this, start to superimpose themselves and overrule and dominate the negative thoughts that we've perhaps had about ourselves or been bombarded by from people around us or even the world where you're not good enough. You need to look like this to be perfect or you have to behave in this way to be acceptable. When we suddenly realize that how he loves us, then truly we can say that we don't have to forget to love ourselves as I started off with that picture. That we can love ourselves and in turn then love our neighbors. I end with this Zechariah 9, the, the last item was almost like a little diamante, diamante bead. And uh, Zechariah 9 verse 16, they will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. Again, when you put jewels in a crown, it's worn on the king or the queen's head. It's on display. It's something to marvel at people. It's eye-catching how attractive and beautiful they will be. And uh, indeed we are, friends. I want to encourage you. You are attractive and beautiful in your sphere of influence, in your household, in your workplace, wherever you go. You, there is a, because of God in you, you become attractive and beautiful to the world. And perhaps you just might feel like a lump of coal at the moment. Well, I tell you what, there is a diamond in there and he sees the diamond. Sometimes we only see the coal in our lives, but he sees the diamond. So we've got to believe it and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you see the diamond in me. And then you know what happens, friends? We start to mine for the gold in others. Where they can't see the gold in themselves, we get to mine that out of them and in them. So bless you all. I'd love to just pray with you. Father, I just pray even now that your tangible manifestation of love, approval, adoration, glory would just be so real to every person watching, Lord God. I thank you that even now you are filling that place where has maybe felt like there's a void. You're filling it up right now that they would feel your love. They would feel your attention, your approval your adoration in Jesus' name. I actually just want to end off with this. So I love God speaking to me through anything, whether it's magazines, newspapers, items, stickers on the floor, whatever it is, pamphlets, yeah, anything. And yesterday I was walking across a parking lot. I haven't even cleaned it off yet, but look what I found on the floor. A deserted parking lot, a little heart with an arrow through it that says love, and then on the other side, arose with the word love isn't that beautiful and you know what when i look at that and i just go that was there somehow it fell off of someone's clothing maybe over the weekend or their necklace or whatever i mean it's 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 pretty janky i mean it looks like it's out of a christmas cracker but you know what when i look at something like this i just hear the heart of the father speaking his love so i pray that you would see something where you just feel like it's a wink from heaven where he's just smiling down over you bless you so much thank you for joining me enjoy the rest of this lovely day and i pray that you would find an opportunity to love on someone whether it be with a whatsapp a sms 
a visit, paying for their meal, sending them flowers, not necessarily a romantic thing, but someone who you feel to reach out to just to remind them that God loves them and he operates through us as a, you know, if they're on our heart, it's first and foremost because they're on his heart. Bless you all. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye.